Picture a sunlit morning in 1942 Prague, a city that has endured so much now held in a chokehold by Nazi Germany. At the forefront of this oppression stands a man called Reinhard Heydrich, a.k.a. the Butcher of Prague, the man with more menacing nicknames than friends. His ruthlessness was unmatched, even among the Nazis, earning him another chilling nickname, the Blonde Beast. Heydrich was high up in the Nazi food chain, a leading architect behind the final solution, a founding head of the Gestapo, and to top it all, the self-imposed acting Reichsprotector of Bohemia and Moravia. If that title sounds overly fancy and pompous, it's because it was. Now, while Heydrich strutted around like a peacock in Prague, unbeknownst to him, a plot to end his tyranny was brewing. The British and the Czechoslovak resistance hatched Operation Anthropoid, which sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, but was, in reality, a bold plan to take Heydrich down. In charge of this mission impossible, Josef Gabčić and Jan Kubis. By the spring of 1942, they were parachuted into Czechoslovakia and began preparations with local resistance. On the 27th of May, as Heydrich's convertible Mercedes-Benz cruised through Prague, he loved to show off, thinking he was untouchable. Gabčík and Kubis lay in wait at a sharp bend. As the car slowed, Gabčík stepped forward, attempting to fire at Heydrich with a Sten submachine gun, but it failed to perform, jamming at the crucial moment. Heydrich, rather than speeding away, stood up, trying to shoot Gabčík with his pistol. It was the opening Kubis needed. He hurled a modified anti-tank grenade towards the vehicle. The explosion wounded Heydrich and Kubis himself. Heydrich, in a state of shock but alive, pursued Gabčík on foot, firing sporadically before collapsing from his injuries. Josef Gabčík and Jan Kubis fled the scene. Gabčík left on foot while Kubis managed to escape on a bicycle. Heydrich was rushed to the hospital. Rumors swirled that Heydrich, even on the brink of death, demanded treatment from an Aryan doctor. True or not, it speaks to the man's deep-rooted racism. His stubbornness was his downfall. The shrapnel from the explosion, combined with possible infection, led to his condition deteriorating rapidly. Eight days post the explosion, on June 4, 1942, Reinhard Heydrich died. His death had profound consequences. The Nazis retaliated with characteristic fury. The local Czech resistance and other sympathizers provided the duo with crucial support, moving them between various safe houses to elude capture. However, the Nazis, in their relentless pursuit, initiated a vast manhunt, using torture and execution as means to extract information from the local populace. As the net tightened, Gabčík, Kubis, and several other paratroopers took refuge in the crypt of the Saints Cyril and Methodius Cathedral in Prague. However, their whereabouts were betrayed by Karol Kurda, a fellow operative who turned traitor for the Nazis in exchange for a reward. On June 18, 1942, the Nazis surrounded the cathedral. In the ensuing six-hour-long gunfight, the Nazis used tear gas and even tried to flood the crypt in an attempt to capture the paratroopers alive. Gabčík and his comrades, however, chose to fight to the last bullet. When it became evident that capture was imminent, they opted to take their own lives rather than fall into the hands of the Nazis. Josef Gabčík shot himself. John Kubis was severely wounded in the gunfight and was later pulled out of the cathedral and executed by the Germans. Operation Anthropoid remains one of the most significant acts of resistance during World War II. It showcased that even the mightiest could be toppled, but not without great cost.